Hello there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode. And I am Professor Tomney. I am going to be taking everybody through another hybridization lesson today. And today we are going to focus on the hybridization of non carbon atoms in organic compounds. So we've really focused on carbon in the first two lessons in this series. We looked at sp3, sp2, and sp, and now I want to take a look at some of the very common atoms that appear in organic structures aside from carbon and how we handle their hybridization in different scenarios. So all of that is coming up right now. All right, so before we get started here, if you could just leave a thumbs up, that will really help promote this material and get us further into the YouTube algorithm. It really helps the channel out whenever you can do that, and I appreciate it. If you would like, you can head on over to chemcomplete.com, check out the description box, and that has information on how to get to our website. We sell guides and useful resources over there for dirt cheap, and I do have a guide on how to successfully pass organic chemistry. What's the general chemistry content you need to be bringing over with you to do that? So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started with the lesson for today. So the first thing that I really want to discuss, and this is going to be a, probably a shorter lecture than the other two were, um, but we still want to discuss it briefly here. So the first thing is the non-hybridization of hydrogen. So hydrogen is probably, next to carbon, the most prevalent atom that we are going to see in organic compounds. So it's a very common element in organic compounds. And this is where we get the idea of hydrocarbons from, is carbon is very often involved in bonds with hydrogen. Now, as far as hydrogen is concerned, hydrogen only has a one s orbital with a single electron in it. Because it does not have access to any p orbitals, there's no such thing as a 1p orbital, the hydrogen does not have the ability to hybridize. So remember that a hybrid is two or more different types of orbitals that are coming together and kind of undergoing this merging process during bonding. And so because hydrogen only has access to the s orbitals, it cannot undergo that type of process. And so all of the hydrogens that we see are not really involved in hybridizing, but they may get involved with a bonding partner that is hybridized, right? So if I were to take a look at something like methane, where I've got all four hydrogens, those hydrogens themselves would only be considered S, whereas the carbon would be considered sp3 hybridized. So just an important note that when we start looking at hydrogens, we don't really associate hybridization with hydrogens. Okay, so what about some of the other very common atoms or elements that we come across in organic compounds? Namely, what about oxygen, nitrogen, and the halogens? And so when I say halogens, I'm including fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine in that group. And you will very often come across them when you're looking at things like, let's say, leaving groups for SN1 and SN2 reactions. So how do they behave in terms of hybridization? So if I take a look at a relatively simple organic compound, let's go ahead and use methanol. So we're going to have the hydrogens coming off of the CH3 group. And then you would have an oxygen. This oxygen would have two lone pairs and then it's going to have a hydrogen. So one of the things that we need to kind of discuss or approach here is the lone pairs. So if you watched the other videos in this lecture series, you should already be familiar with the idea that when we have sigma bonds, sigma bonds are going to be involved in hybrid orbitals. Okay, now again, the exception here being that hydrogen cannot hybridize. So we know that oxygen is involved in two sigma bonds here. So we would at least expect both of the bonds that are involved here to be occurring in hybrid orbitals for that oxygen. So at a very minimum, it's got two of these sigma bonds. It would have to at least be sp. Now the question comes in when we start looking at lone pairs. And so are lone pairs going to be in hybridized orbitals or are they going to be located in p orbitals? And the answer really lies in 
taking a look at or analyzing the molecular geometry that we find around here. So we have a 109.5 bond angle when we're looking at something like methane. And when we get to something like methanol, it turns out that the bond angle here is roughly around 104.5. So it's not exactly the same, but it is pretty close to the 109.5. And it turns out that in order to create this kind of equal splitting with the bent geometry, you would need to have these in hybrid orbitals as far as the spacing is concerned. The p orbitals would end up giving different bond angles that we would expect. And so it turns out through evidence and being able to look at the bond angles in these types of molecules that indeed they are going to be in hybrid orbitals, these lone pairs. All right, so that means that the oxygen would be sp3 because if the lone pairs also exist in hybrid orbitals, then I need one, two, three, four hybrid orbitals, which means it's got to be s and all three of the p orbitals in order to get sp3. Okay. Now, if this is the first video that you are watching in the series and you aren't familiar with sp3, sp2, and sp hybridization states, I would strongly encourage you to check out the playlist that is linked in the description box and go back through the first two lectures because they really outline how this occurs with carbon. We go through in great detail the hybridization and how do you deal with sp3, sp2, and sp and then this will start to make more sense, all right? But if you are familiar with that, the lone pairs, generally speaking, are going to be found in hybrid orbitals. Now, that talks about handling lone pairs. There is something we need to discuss, which is resonance, okay? And I'm gonna kinda do a larger lecture on resonance coming up in the next week or two here that I'll post onto the channel. And I really kinda wanna have a running series for organic, because these are the first few lectures that you learn in organic chemistry, and we're gonna build from there. So. If you continue, and let's take a look now at the acetate ion. So that's sort of a very common uh, example to exhibit resonance. So resonance is the delocalization of electrons over multiple atoms in a molecule. So acetic acid, which is the main component in vinegar, would have a hydrogen attached here. But when the hydrogen leaves, because it's acidic, it leaves behind an extra pair of electrons and we end up with what's called the acetate ion. Okay, so this is the acetate ion. And the acetate ion can undergo resonance. And what we mean when we say resonance is that this molecule right here has the ability to take the lone pair that was left behind, and it can take that pair and shift it into a double bond, and then this oxygen up here can end up taking on the lone pair. And so what we end up with is what we would call a resonance form. So it's an additional way in which this molecule can distribute the excess charge that's left behind. And this second resonance form would look like this. The oxygen at the top would now take the extra pair and the negative charge, and we would have a pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Well, if you've watched the previous lectures in this series, you realize that the carbon involved with the double bonded oxygen should be sp2, right? So this carbon is definitely sp2, and this oxygen is also sp2. We know that now because if I look, this is in a hybrid orbital, this is in a hybrid orbital, and then one of these two bonds is going to be in a p orbital, the other would be in a hybrid orbital, right? So one of the two is hybridized. So if we've got one, two, three, we have a need for three hybrid orbitals, that would be sp2, because it's two p orbitals and one s that are gonna come together. Now, the key here, what you need to understand when you're looking at this, is that when we're dealing with resonance, resonance forms do not exist individually. So that is to say that this form right here and this form right here do not switch back and forth. They don't take turns going back and forth and moving the electrons around. It really gets delocalized over the entire set of oxygen carbon bonds. And so that is to say the truth, the reality, is that it's kind of a blend between these two states that is existing, okay? That's what's actually present there, uh, is a delocalization or a movement of these electrons between the two carbon-oxygen bonds, and it's being spread out that way. And so what happens is because 
both of these oxygens need to be involved in this type of process, it's going to kind of play a trick on you when you start trying to analyze this. So let's do a different color. Let's come up here and I'll pick out green. Okay, if you look at this oxygen, you might say, all right, here's a lone pair. Lone pairs exist in hybrid orbitals. Here's another, and here's another, plus there's a sigma bond. So that's a total of four hybrid orbitals that are needed. So, oh, this must be sp3. The problem with that is that this form does not truly exist, okay? Nor does this form, this sp2 form. It really goes back and forth okay or is spread between these two forms and so what you need to really realize is this oxygen that you're calling sp3 is at the same time really trying to also behave in an sp2 type of state so what this means at the end of the day is that if this oxygen is going to participate in the delocalization which means it has to be open to forming pi bonds then it must have a p orbital that is left behind in reserve because if you remember from the other lectures p orbitals are required to form pi bonds so in other words this carbonyl that has a double bonded oxygen and then a single bonded oxygen in one of the resonance forms that is equivalent or equal to it also being in this form and the truth is it's really a blend between those two forms at all times And so what does that mean as far as the hybridization? It means that the ones that look like they could be sp3 at a given time are actually sp2. And they have to be sp2 because if they were not sp2, they would not have the p orbital left behind in order to help participate in the shifting of pi electrons back and forth. Pi electrons exist in p orbitals. So that's just something to pay attention to that if you do have these what we would call hetero atoms oxygen nitrogen and halogens that pop up or are a part of this a lot of times they will end up being sp3 hybridized if they are involved in no pi bonds whatsoever some of them may be involved in no pi bonds in the current image you're looking at but The truth is that they have a resonance form or an adjacent form that does get them involved with pi bonds and in that case it's better to err on the side of caution and we say that these must be sp2 hybridized in those cases okay so it is possible to have a lone pair of electrons that is not actually in a hybrid orbital because it needs to participate in going back and forth rapidly to help with pi electron delocalization all right so that is it If again you have not left a like, I would really appreciate it if you could do that to help out the channel. Subscribe for the latest content. Head on over to chemcomplete.com to check out all of the needs that we can serve you with over there. And other than that, thank you for learning with me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.